Welcome back to ELH4X4 doing stuff. Working on a 76 Corvette. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the windshield. Two reasons. The problem over in this corner here is leaking. When, it, when I wash the car, it ends up in the passenger seat. So the two reasons is we're going to replace the windshield because this one's all pitted up being over 40 years old. And to find out what's going on with the frame, if we can spot repair it or do we have to replace some of the components. So we're just going to blast through removing the windshield. Um, I ended up going with the orange bat which uses a um, cord, right? Instead of using a cold cold knife technique, um, this one uses a whatever material cord is. But what I also found interesting with this windshield is that it's not even really adhered at the bottom so it's only really held in so yeah that's kind of odd anyway what I did to prep for using the the cord is I cut away as best as possible in some of the areas the adhesive it goes around the edge. So anyway, I'm going to get the, the bat set up and I'm not going to show you how to remove the windshield because there's all kinds of other people. That's not what we're doing today. We're not doing windshield removal. We're removing the windshield to look at the windshield frame. All right, so we got the windshield out. went pretty good I was glad to see some damming tape and if you don't know what that is um, it's just tape foam tape that goes on one side of the adhesive so when you're pushing it in it doesn't squish into the uh, this side of the windshield right it'll push it out but anyway I was glad to see the damming tape was used so I just got to pull the windshield out all right that would explain why there was no adhesion to the bottom of the windshield is because they never put hardly any of the adhesive where the windshield touches, they put it underneath. We got some rust, but no rot. And our trouble side is over there. Right, you can, let me get some light on that. All right, so our leak was coming from this spot right here. That doesn't look bad as I thought it was. This is kind of crusty but I think I could fix that with just a little bit of welding so I don't need to replace this center portion this doesn't look that bad we'll get the adhesive removed and then uh, do another assessment so I think it was just I mean 
it just seems like a lot of the issues that were going on with these C3s were in the upper right hand corner. Is that why? Because of that gap right here and it allowed water to seep in right where that notch is. And then a little bit of crusty over here. But I could fix that up with some, some welds. I'll definitely need to buy new clips. These get screwed in. And then when you're taking the molding off, you just pull back. You pull back on this, the bent side. And it releases the, the molding. All right, going through, scraping as much of the um, sealant off as possible, taking the molding clips off. They are stainless screws. Stainless screw. So if you use the right size screwdriver, you will be able to get it out. Just work it back and forth a little bit. Some of these clips seemed like they were just set in place. So what we're gonna do is, once we get it all cleaned up, use the molding. As a reference, these tabs, use the molding as a reference to see if the holes are in place. If not, we're gonna drill holes for the new clips that I ordered. We got our little corner pieces out that hold the T-tops in, or line the T-top up. We got that out. And we're just gonna to continue to, to scrape away and get rid of as much of the sealant as possible. And then uh, once it kind of clears up, gets a little, once we get the a carburetor, also you can see over here, we got the carburetor off. Um, I ended up stripping out the fuel filter, the threads for the fuel filter, because uh, it was leaking. So the more I tightened it, um, the less it would leak, and then uh, it just got to the point where I over-tightened it and stripped it out. So I had to order a new carburetor, get an exact uh, replacement. Anyway, uh, we'll get the vehicle pushed out and, you know, do a lot of the grinding, not grinding, but wire brush, some sandpaper, you know, the sand discs, the roll lock discs, I guess. Hold on. You know, these things. We'll get, get everything all kind of covered up. Um before we start grinding. You know, it's a little bit easier to get the bigger chunks out of the interior. I'm going to keep the dash pad in and just take my measurement from top to bottom, excuse me, with the uh, windshield and uh, you know, that way when you, you set the windshield in, you, you trace around the frame. That way you know where to put the dam tape. I don't feel like taking a dash off to do that. So I'm just going to measure top to bottom and then put that reference on a new windshield. I'm keeping... The old one for now, just in case, um, 
I really need to get rid of it because it's uh, all pitted up and whatnot, hard to see out of. So that's where we're at. Um, okay, we'll just keep keep the prep. Prep is key. The more time and effort we put into prep will prevent things like rusting out. It'll prevent the rotting out over there. And I don't know what they were thinking by putting the, you know, this thing wasn't even connected. So I don't, I don't know what the situation was down at the bottom. They filled up this spot. You know, I could have seen if they went down low, but they didn't even go down low. They filled this area up. I don't know. That doesn't, that's not where the, where the windshield touches, you know, so the frame, you can see, yikes, you can see where the frame comes around, right? And they had this little channel filled up. I don't know why. So, uh, was the, was that something at... You know, the factory? I don't know. You know what? Uh, hold on, let me see. Because maybe the windshield doesn't have the factory um, markings on it. So let me go check that. Okay, that explains a lot. That's not the factory windshield. This vehicle was in an accident. You know, this is a new... No, new at the time, a replacement clip, you know, from previous videos, I think I may have talked about not having the, the inner front fender support, the rear um, bumper, not, not fender, the front bumper support inner was missing. Um, it's a fiberglass front bumper and a fiberglass rear bumper. The rear bumper was missing the inner support and whatnot so yeah i maybe the windshield was cracked when it was in the accident and they replaced it with the aftermarket uh windshield and they didn't take the time to prep the frame so that's what we're going to do so that's what i was getting at after that diatribe of all these other non-related incidences what I'm getting at is we take the time to prep the surfaces, recoat everything, and then that way uh, we'll prevent um, further decay. All right.